Thousands and thousands of people are looking for PhD scholarships every single day, especially in developing countries where education is one of the best way to succeed. I know uh, sometimes we have these kind of ideas, oh, uh, Steve Jobs quit school, dropped from college, Mark of Facebook, Bill Gates dropped from school, all other things, whatever. But in end, uh, education is one of the pillars or one of the way foundation where people we believe we can succeed through education and especially in developing countries. And some other people, they go bachelor to go to master's to increase the salary. Some people, they okay, let me go for PhD so that I can have more salary or can get more money. Some, some people, they go because they are already are teaching at the college level. So obviously it's a requirement. You must have master's and then you have to have PhD. So there are so many reasons why someone wants to have PhD. Someone wants to be called a doctor, PhD holder or professor. Someone wants to have a promotion in the government. If you are PhD holder, you get more opportunities than someone else. So there are so many reasons why someone wants to do PhD. So I don't care what is your reason. My point is to explain the difference between PhD in the US and PhD in Europe. Or rather, what are the differences in applying PhD by thesis vis-a-vis -vis PhD by Kozuken dissertation. Because when you talk about PhD by thesis, it's more about Europe and other countries. But when you come to US, it's more about Kozuken dissertation. So if we are talking about US versus Europe, for instance, we are talking about thesis versus Kozuken dissertation. Which way? should you do? So let's analyze that first of all. And that's why in my book about the two memoirs of the scholarship guy, which is talking about myself and how I went through applying for scholarships, there is one chapter, it's called chapter four. If you can see there, is USA against the, uh, the world or the rest of the world, but mostly is about Europe and other countries, where I'm talking more about the different ways on how you can apply uh, for scholarships, whether it's bachelor, master's, PhD, the difference between Europe and America in general. But this is specifically about PhD. So, Europe, you apply PhD by thesis. US, you go to do or you come to do PhD by coursework and dissertation. By thesis, let me just put it the general way. By thesis, it means from day one, you will not go to the classroom like normal bachelor or master's. It is you and your supervisor. You will be doing the work. You will be having the study plan. After six months, I will be going for data collection. I will start writing and submit. I will defend on this time. So it's you and your supervisor. But when you do coursework and dissertation, coursework means you go to the class. These are the the studies they put there. For instance, if you look, this is the catalog, graduate catalog for the University of San Diego, and I was featured on the cover here. That is me back in 2009-2010 when I was studying there. So, if it is master's, for instance, like education uh, or PhD or something, uh, so um, if we are talking about PhD, it will have specific courses where you are supposed to take those kind of courses. Yeah, so they will have a specific course, maybe year one, it will take one, two, three. After finishing these courses, you are going to take what we call comprehensive exam. And then from there, you are going to do your dissertation. So for that case, when it comes to application, you will see the difference. How do you apply PhD by thesis? Or how do you apply in Europe? And how do you apply in the US, which is under course of dissertation? So because in Europe, or by thesis itself, you are applying and you will be not going to class. You are going to talk with your direct supervisor. So when you apply for PhD in Europe, means you are applying for a supervisor. Listen to me very careful. You are applying for a supervisor. So if you're applying for a supervisor, one, you need to have a topic. Second, you need to have what we call a PhD proposal. 
just roughly like five maximum pa 10 pages what are you going to do in your PhD? The concept, the bibliography, and a few other things, whatever it will be able, you Google there, what is the PhD proposal? Like, not the entire, like, the one you're going to present, but just a high-level summary of what you're going to do. What kind of theory, whatever, kind of that, the concept. And then you are attached with, with your resume and sometimes with the recommendation letters, you find a supervisor. So, if you want to apply University of Twente in Netherlands, or University of Oslo in Norway. What you do, you go to the department. If it's engineering, you go to the department you were to apply. You look on professors. They have a list of professors, their email and phone number. Don't call. Just write the email and request someone in your area of study. That means I'm so and so. You introduce yourself, put your resume, you whatever, and you are requesting the, that professor to be your supervisor. That's how it's done. If that professor agrees to be your supervisor, means is giving you the letter of acceptance that I'll be your supervisor for this one, for from this semester, for the, maybe fall semester or what called autumn semester onwards. So that letter of acceptance as your supervisor, technically that is admission letter. But you must apply, first of all, the university, they must have a scholarship announced somewhere. Then you apply... A supervisor first, and then you are going to do the rest of the process. But after having the letter of acceptance from a certain supervisor. So you'll be sending to many of them, maybe 10, 15, whatever. And then one, two, three, they can accept it, depending on if they have area of interest. So that is one part. But if you are applying in America, cause of dissertation, by overall, I don't say overall, because you are going to attend the classes in a normal way, you are applying direct to school, to the department. So you'll find, you'll find on the website, Prospective Studies, Harvard, PhD in Molecular Biology, whatever, or PhD in Leadership. Just there, these are the procedures. Submit TOEFL, submit GRI, submit this, submit this. You are going ahead. You apply. But in very few areas, there are some of the professors in the US, they have a particular project. So they want also down the road to have someone to supervise in that particular area. So they can announce a specific scholarship in those areas. So they might ask you during the application, submit a concept related to that particular area. Or your committee will do your dissertation on certain area. So there are a few of those. So you'll be told to write a little bit of sample writing or something like that. But overall, like over 99%, you just apply directly to the university. So that is the biggest difference on how you go to apply. You apply to the university, but here you apply to a person to be your supervisor. Because here you have to do all research work, whatever the course you're supposed to do, at least two years minimum. Then you are going to do comprehensive exam, and then you choose your supervisor while you are studying your coursework of your PhD. That's the application process. The other difference is, again, it comes to the number of years of studies. Because in co studying PhD in Europe, you are di dealing with a thesis direct with a supervisor, means from day one is your speed. You can do that one. Majority of people, they do within three years. But my brothers, Alex and Alexander, who are professors now, they did their PhD in Germany for one year. So it's depending with your speed, what, how, how committed you are to do your, your research, have a study plan, and go to finish everything. But in the U.S., you cannot do that. Like No matter how much your speed is, you cannot do within one year. Majority of people, if they have high speed, they do within three years. But it's very common to have four, five, six years in the U.S. someone to finish PhD. Because you'll you have two to three years just to sit in the class to do the coursework before you start doing your dissertation. Then from there, you will start your dissertation. So the length of studies is a little bit more in the U.S. versus in Europe. Then... When it comes to overall financial part, in Europe, they give what we call just a scholarship or fellowship. Means they give you the money. So whether you study, then you go to sleep, that's up to you. But in the US, we give what we give what we call assistantship program. Assistantship means you are assisting something in the department. In many countries, 
we call tutorial assistant, TA. So you are assisting either being supervisor for the seminar, or because you are doing PhD, you can be take, teaching undergrad courses, or you are, you are going to be a seminar leader for master's students. So you will be assisting, or you will be assisting research. So you will be doing certain kind of academic related job in the department so that they can pay for your tuition and fees and they'll be giving you a certain stipend which will be helping you for cost of living. But in you, Europe is mostly scholarship. They don't expect you to go to teach something like that. The majority is not that way. So that is another major difference if you want to compare. Then, when it comes to uh, admission process, there is fees in U.S., application fees. In Europe, there is no application fees. That is already I talked to other video, the difference between Europe and the U.S. But there is admission test. Most, both areas, Europe and U.S., they, they want you to do the English proficiency test. But in U.S., they have more tests, either GRI or GMAT or LSAT, whatever. So, for instance, this is an example of the GMAT exam or the preparation, which is graduate manage, management admission test. This is for the people who are taking the uh, management program PhD. This LSAT is for those who are taking the Juris Doctor, uh, JD, or those who are taking the, uh, uh, just, uh, I don't know how do they call, I don't know whether it's called LD or something, but PhD in law, things of that nature. Uh, those who are taking PhD in non-management program or not law, they will take a GRI exam, graduate record examination. So there are more examination of that nature. So these, those are the basic major differences between the two. Then it comes to the normal processes, like you must have recommendation, you must have a good resume. Those are the basics for all applications. You must have a statement of purpose. Sometimes they want, apart from writing something, you need to have sample writing because it's a PhD. So there are things of that nature. But overall, when you are going to apply, you also must apply to as many universities as possible. And in the U.S. For, in particular, or even in Europe, don't just go to any website you start just applying and then later I'm going to find a man. You must go to a university. They have announced in the website, if you apply at the University of Hawaii, PhD in molecular biology, you'll be granted assistantship of this amount. So you know for sure, this is program is covered. Don't apply and then later I will come to find the money. No. If you apply, they didn't mention about the money, means you have applied as self-financing student. So if you are not so sure about that, write an email to the graduate admission office or to a particular departmental contact which is put on the website. They will tell you that whether that one is legit they have or they don't have so but don't waste your time to apply if there are no scholarships are uh, announced so that is how i can simply say the major difference between europe and the us when it comes to phd either studying or just application it means the phd by thesis in europe or phd by course and dissertation is up to you there is no saying that if you study course and dissertation, you are going to be very critical compared to more than the person who is going to do by, th by thesis direct. Doesn't matter whether you do by thesis, whether you do by course, in the end is PhD. It's just, you can do by thesis, you can be very tight, you study a lot of books, good supervisor, you can do by coursework and dissertation, you can be very tight. So it doesn't matter, is the preference where do you want to go and how you prepare yourself to apply and make sure that you get financial support to make sure that you do that. So if you have any question about how to get this kind of scholarship for PhD, I'll put the link also either here or somewhere else, but about all links for PhD, where can you get scholarships, especially in the US, and I'll be posting links about scholarships in Europe. They're going to be able to help you on how to get this kind of scholarship, but share this video to any person, whether is looking for scholarships or planning to edu go for further education, send it to your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, your uncle, share in WhatsApp, share in Facebook, share in uh, telegram whatever any kind of social media you want to share you can share these links and someone will be able to benefit so thank you thank you thank you so much and for your support remember to subscribe to my channel so that you can get the notification when i'm posting these kind of videos so all the best
to your PhD or doctorate studies.